Well, hello and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy, and welcome to another episode of Flat Earth Can't Science. Okay, guys, we're going to do something a little different this time. Phuket Word just put out another video on how a sextant can be made to work on a flat earth. We addressed this in Flat Earth Can't Science episode 4, which is one of my more popular ones. So let's go see what he has to say. Hello, flat earth researchers, debaters, and debunkers. We are told that the angle at which we observe Polaris above the horizon at any given location north of the equator is said to be proof that we live on a globe Earth. Simply because the further away we get from the North Pole, the lower Polaris appears to be towards the horizon. It's illustrated like this with, a, with observers on the globe looking up at Polaris. All right, so let's go ahead and have a look at this diagram real quick. Now, if you take that person, say, at the equator on the right, as you can see, their down is directly towards the center of the Earth, and their level is perpendicular to that radius line they're standing on. Light from Polaris, which is a star 50 times the size of our sun, approximately 400 light years away, arrives at the Earth in parallel lines, as demonstrated. If you look at that person on the horizon, the light from Polaris will be arriving at that location at an angle of zero to his level. And as a result, the equator is considered zero degrees latitude. Now that perpendicular line that the person is standing on is their local level. That has nothing to do with the horizon or anything else. It is merely a level line from which the uh, elevation of Polaris is measured as an angle. Now let's let Phuket continue. I'm just going to quickly go through what's wrong with this view and show how it works perfectly fine on a flat earth as well. So let's just, uh, the, the way Polaris has been illustrated here is this massive thing uh, above the globe earth. Okay, I think that that's just a little disingenuous. Nobody is suggesting that Polaris is either that large or that close to the earth. It's simply an illustration to show that the light from Polaris arrives at the Earth in parallel lines. The key concept being illustrated is that Polaris is very far away, the light is parallel, and by that we can measure the lines of latitude on Earth. We'll represent Polaris with this yellow circle here because Polaris is just a, a spot in the sky. Okay, now this change that he's making right now is deceptively innocuous. In order for a sextant to work, it counts on the fact that the light coming from uh, the sun or a celestial body is coming in in parallel rays. Now in order to do this the sun or the north star need to be very distant objects. The north star as I said was some 400 light years away and the sun is 93 million miles away. However this violates a basic principle of the flat earth and invalidates the concept. So Phuket has to work in that both the sun and the north star are local objects that are very small and this is how he's doing it. This is basically his lighter trick that he did on his perspective video, except he's palming the North Star. So let's just make it smaller. Of course, it's assumed that Polaris is millions and millions of miles away. This is something they have to do for the heliocentric globe Earth model to try and make it all fit. So what we have is someone at the North Pole looking directly up at Polaris at an angle of elevation above that observer's horizon, eye level, of 90 degrees. Okay, so we, we have this admission here with the globe Earth belief that the horizon is the observer's eye level. Okay, I don't know if you caught that little NLP trick, but let me show it to you. First, he talks about the elevation of Polaris above the uh, observer's horizon, eye level. And then that becomes an admission by the globe defenders that the horizon is at eye level. As you recall from what I said earlier, the thing that they're standing on is not the horizon, it's simply the perpendicular line to the radius from which they measure the elevation of Polaris. Now I don't want to dwell on this too much, but this is a water level. As you can see, uh, just to the left of that level is a small island. The horizon is clearly below level. Of course, with the globe, it's assumed that the further away you get from uh, the North Pole, then this you get this change in the angle at which down occurs. 
The concept that he seems to be struggling with is that down is towards the center of the earth from wherever you are standing on the spherical earth. You are essentially standing on top of a radius line and level is perpendicular to that radius line. So for example at 50 degrees latitude the observer observes Polaris at 50 degrees above their eye level horizon. Okay, once again he tries to sneak in eye level horizon. That is not an eye level horizon. It is 50 degrees above the horizon full stop. And uh, so this is how the lines of latitude were determined in the first place, measuring the angle of altitude above the horizon at which we observe Polaris and then uh, using nautical miles to represent these points of latitude. No, actually that's not how the spherical coordinate system was developed. We've known the Earth as a globe for centuries and as a result we developed this mapping system where we have a 0 to 90 degrees going north and south of the equator. So if you start off at the North Pole, you go through 90 degrees to the equator, another 90 degrees to the South Pole, 90 degrees on the other side of the Earth and to the equator, and then another 90 degrees back up to the North Pole. Each degree is divided into 60 minutes, and one minute is one nautical mile in length. So first off, we have this um, scenario that's never been proven ever with this idea that uh, down changes in the angle because you have to have down going towards the center of the spherical earth. Okay, I'm going to stop him right there because that's an outright falsehood. When I am standing on the 45th north parallel, I know that my down is directly towards the center of the earth and is at a 45 degree angle to the down of a person standing at the north pole. Quite frankly, that is how lines of latitude work. And then we have this angle of elevation at 50 degrees, latitude being 50 degrees. But we can see here that uh, this line uh, 50 degrees above the horizontal for the observer here goes up here, goes past Polaris. Okay, so once again he's trying to implant the idea that Polaris is local into your subconscious here. He's trying to tell you that the line of sight to Polaris somehow goes past this local Polaris. That is not the case. It doesn't go past. It goes towards a very distant Polaris. Because, as stated earlier, that light arrives in parallel rays. Just as the light of the sun, only 93 billion miles away, arrives at Earth in parallel rays. And this idea that the rays of the sunlight come in in parallel is very easy to test yourself. If you take a magnifying glass and shine light at it from several different angles, it'll have trouble focusing that light to a very sharp focal point. However, take it outside into the sunlight, you can easily focus those sun rays into a very distinct sharp point and actually set things on fire with it. Okay, so next Phuket is going to try and promote this concept that we have to have these divergent rays to a local Polaris. We've already shown in episode 4 that a sextant will not work if the rays diverge, but he's still trying to promote it here. This representation here in the globe is, is not a true representation of, of what the direction we should be looking to see Polaris. If Polaris is above the North Pole, then this is this red line would represent the line of sight that we should be looking at. No, Nick, this is not what we see we see the light coming in in parallel lines as those arrows are. You are attempting to make up this red line to support your concept of a local Polaris because a distant Polaris is incompatible with your narrative of a flat Earth. Even though it's supposed to be over there. It's, it's just wrong. It doesn't really work. But it's very interesting that you end up with a, a line of sight to Polaris that's actually lower, a shallower angle than the angle that's illustrated here. I am sorry, but the angle that we read off the sextant when looking at the North Star is exactly the angle that the parallel light from the North Star strikes the Earth. At 45 degrees north latitude, the light is coming in at 45 degrees. That is because Polaris is very distant and the light strikes us at the same angle. That is the entire concept behind a sextant.
The sextant, like the magnifying glass in the sun, will not work unless the light is coming in in parallel. So that's what you get. That's how it's defined, either side of the globe. Um, this is the only way that we are told we can prove we live on a globe. And I'm sorry, Nick, but that absolutely is not true. We can measure curvature. We can measure time zones. We can measure weight changes with uh, latitude. We can measure Coriolis effects. We can measure dozens of other parameters that confirm that we live on a globe. All our eggs are not in this basket. Of course, we know that this happens with perspective. We look along a row of street lamps and the further away those street lamps get, the lower towards the horizon they appear to be. Okay, Phuket, you tried to use the perspective card in the last video. I'm going to refer people to Flat Earth Can't Science Episode 4 for a full discussion of that. The bottom line is that we actually ran the numbers for perspective on a flat Earth, and we found that at the 45th parallel, we were well over a thousand miles off our location compared to the spherical Earth and a sextant. So it simply doesn't work, and I have the numbers to prove it. Okay, before we go into the next section, I want to remind everybody about the laws of perspective here. Looking at this scene from Phuket that looks down a dock, you see the railings on either side. They start tall and then they work their way down towards your eye level. The key difference here is that is what happens to things that are going away from you. If you look at the end of the dock, you will see a fence. Do you notice that it does not get smaller because we're looking at it from the side? That is simply the law of perspective. But what Phuket tries to do when it suits his narrative is he tries to apply this decreasing size with distance to the side view. But if you look at this dock, you can clearly see that that is inappropriate. Let's have a look at how this can be represented in a flat Earth. Knowing that the further away we get from something that's in the sky, the lower it will appear to be in the sky. We get these lines that go lower and lower and lower and lower. So Polaris would be the further away we get towards the equator, the lower and lower and lower Polaris would appear to be. Okay, to try and make this fit his flat earth narrative, as you can see, Nick is attempting to put perspective and objects getting shorter in this side view. So if we go back to this picture, which is an excellent example of perspective from Phuket Word himself, we see that the side objects that are going away from us get smaller. Yet the one there on the end, which is in side view, remains the same height from left to right. So what he is trying to do here is make up his own rules of perspective to fit his flat earth narrative. This is because when back in episode 4 we used the real rules of perspective, we found that the error rate of a sextant on a flat earth using his version of perspective would give us a 1200 mile error in our position at the 45th parallel. He attempts to claim that this misuse of perspective is the direct cause of things appearing as though they're on a curve on our spherical earth. Instead, it's translated into a curved surface with lines of angles of elevation that don't actually match up to where they should be. Actually, sailors have been using these correct angles as the light comes in from Polaris and the Sun and other celestial objects for centuries to successfully navigate the oceans. What you're doing is not only making something up out of whole cloth, you're attempting to rewrite the entire history of navigation. It's not going to work. Well, I'm going to cut Paquet off there. Uh, he's doing what we uh, refer to out here as polishing a turd. He just keeps talking about this confusing, contradictory pseudo-perspective that he believes accounts for the curve of the Earth. I've mentioned a couple of times that we did a spreadsheet during episode four comparing the actual degree of latitude with the angle of Polaris on a spherical Earth and the angle of a local Polaris on a flat Earth. 
Now, as you can see, as we go through these numbers degree by degree, the error rate suddenly starts building from the 89th degree of latitude compared to the North Pole. By the time you get down to the equator, you are looking at almost 1,700 miles of error. This is not what we see in the real world. We see what you'd see on a sphere. Now, in the very unlikely chance that you are under the impression that Phuket may have a point here, and that maybe the dome over the Earth is correcting the refraction of these rays from Polaris. Well, here you see the refractive index required by degree of latitude to actually correct the rays of Polaris, a local Polaris, to what we actually see on a sextant. The take-home message on this graph is when you get to the right side, you need a refractive index that is less than a vacuum, in a physical impossibility. And in case you thought his perspective argument was persuasive, these blue bars here are the error rates by degree of latitude when taking into account perspective. As you can see, at 45 degrees, it's more than 1,000 miles. You know, after observing the flat Earth movement for several months now, I've come to several conclusions. The first is that this is not a science-based movement. This is a conspiracy theory. You know, you're led by people like Phuket Word, that really are completely clueless. The only reason that they are able to come out and spout this nonsense on YouTube is that they are counting that you know even less about perspective than they do. And that, quite frankly, is a little sad. I've seen many photographs and observations that claim to prove the flat Earth. This is an observation from New Zealand where a gentleman took a plastic tube and leveled it on a tripod, and he's 1,200 feet up on a mountaintop looking out over the ocean. His conclusion was that the horizon was at eye level because that is what is required on a flat Earth. And if you indeed look down this tube, you can see at the far end the horizon's in the middle of it. I was kind enough to actually put some crosshairs on it for you. But if you look at the back end of that tube, you can clearly see that it is angled up. So in reality, if you line those crosshairs up, you will see that level is well above horizon. Yet people are filling the comments on this video, claiming that this is an absolute slam dunk to prove the flat earth. You cannot have a flat earth if the horizon is below your observation level. Now this evening, Soundly was down in a live broadcast from Lake Pontchartrain by the causeway there. He had a number of people in the hotel room, multiple cameras, it was open live. Nathan Oakley stopped by for just a moment. What an opportunity to ask questions, to have him pan to different areas. He was following the directions of the crowd. What did Oakley do? He took off. Did Riley come? No. Did Phuket come? No. How many times do people need to be shown curvature before they realize the Earth is a sphere. The reason that the flat Earth movement is a conspiracy theory and is not now nor has ever been a science is their treatment of evidence. Every time curvature is shown to people in the flat Earth community, they try and find 27 ways that it could, it could not possibly be curvature. It's atmospheric compression, dirty air, scientific method didn't have a variable that met somebody's definition of scientific method. That is because they are driven by an end result that they want rather than their evidence. In closing, the flat earth movement is not science. It is not a method of inquiry. It is a narrative. And until you start treating evidence with the respect that it deserves and making connections you will be forever marginalized end of rant thank you very much for listening hope you hit the subscribe button and i hope to have some more videos out soon